Yeah. Um, for me, for me, well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the, the, the technical answer, and then, then I need to tell you the, the management answer. Okay. And, and let me explain why. The technical answer is that there's a there's a piece of piece of functionality um, that is between the SMs, the shared multiprocessors, symmetric multiprocessors. Okay. All of these SMs, streaming multiprocessors, depending on how you like to describe them. So all these SMs. Clusters and clusters of SMs, 256 processors, needs to communicate with each other. And they need to be able to communicate with memory down here of all different types. And so there's the SMs up here, and underneath there's these, the memories. In between, there's a very, very complicated and sophisticated interconnecting system that is very fast. And it's just nearly all wires. It's all nearly just a sheet of metal. It's so dense of metal with, with almost very little logic because all you wanted to do was take the information from here to move it to any other processor and they should all be able to communicate all at the same time. It's just, all these processors go back and forth communicating with each other. We call that the fabric. Kind of like this, like a piece of fabric where everything can connect with each other at very high speeds. And the clock rates are incredibly fast. Well, when you have uh, wires that are next to each other that closely, they, they couple, they interfere. When we have wires that are literally meshed like this, it's a solid mesh of metal. This way, this way, and this way, and this way. Everything is, commu is coupling to each other. The parasitic... Um, characterization from our foundries and the tools and reality are simply not related <laughs> at all. <laughs> we found a, a major breakdown between the models, the tools, and reality. And so when we first got the first Fermi back, that piece of fabric, so imagine we are all processors, all of us seem to be working, but we can't talk to each other. It's like we're all deaf. We're all mute and deaf. Can't hear each other, can't talk to each other. And we found out it's because this connection between us is completely broken. So we re-engineered the whole thing and made it work. All right, so that's a technical problem, the fabric. Your question is actually deeper than that. Your question wasn't, Jensen, what broke for Fermi? Well, the answer is fabric. The question is, how would you not have let it happen again? It won't be fabric next time. It'll be something else, right? We don't know what we don't know. Okay. Well, it turns out the reason why the fabric failed isn't because it was hard, but because it, it, it sat between the responsibility of two groups. The fabric is complicated in the sense that there's, there's an architectural component, there's a logic design component, and then there's a physics component. My engineers who know physics and my engineers who know architecture are in two different organizations. And so you see this underlap of responsibility. Is it your job or my job? If you just simply moved it from one side to the other side, they would have been more than happy to pick up the slack. But we let it sit right in the middle. Let's be both of our jobs. That's a bad answer. So the management lesson learned is that there should always be a pilot in charge. Okay. We're all, we all want the safety of the plane. We're all part of the crew. But who's the pilot in charge? And so for every complicated thing in our company, there should be some, somebody who's the pilot in charge, who's responsible for the safety and the, and the delightful arrival, the on-time arrival <laughs> of the plane. That's the management. <laughs>